Rainbow Children Medicaid Limited earnings conference call. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode, and anyone who wishes to ask a question may enter star and one on their touchdown phone. To remove yourself from the queue, please enter star and two. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchdown phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Siddharth Ragnikar from CDR India. Thank you, and over to you, Siddharth. Thank you, Tanvi. Welcome, everyone, to the earnings conference call of Rainbow Children's Medical Limited to discuss the financial performance for the fourth quarter and full year ended March 31, 2023. We have with us Dr. Ramesh Kanchala, Chairman and Managing Director, Mr. Sanjeev Sukumaran, Chief Operating Officer, Mr. R. Gauri Shankar, Chief Financial Officer, and Mr. Saurabh Bhandari, Group Business Analyst. Before we commence, I would like to share that some of the statements made on today's call could be forward-looking in nature and may involve certain risks and uncertainties. A detailed statement in this regard is available in the quarter four FI23 results presentation that is hosted on the company's website and also uploaded on the stock exchange sites. I would now like to invite Dr. Ramesh to make his opening comments. Over to you, sir. Thanks, Siddharth. Good morning, everyone. It gives me immense pleasure to welcome you all to the earnings call for the fourth quarter and for the full year FI23. It's been one full year since we had our IPO, and when, when I look back at the, the last year's journey, the few things stand out. Rainbow remains the only listed pediatric hospital chain in the English-speaking world. Consequently, the listed universe has no peer comparison for the financial analysts as well as investors. Therefore, ever since the IPO in May 22, we had to seriously engage with the investors both in India and overseas and explain the various building blocks of our business model, our key differentiators, and the significant growth opportunity in our business model and its potential. Our efforts are bearing fruit, and there is a perceptibly a better comprehension of our business model among the investor and analyst community. I must say that and I, have, I have really enjoyed this journey of evangelizing children's health care and its business potential. Once again, to reiterate our clinical model, pediatric services on the Rainbow brand includes newborn and pediatric intensive care services, pediatric multi-specialty care, pediatric quaternary care, organ transplantation, Birth rate by Rainbow is an integrated obstetric model vertical, which includes normal and complex obstetric care, multidisciplinary fetal care, perinatal genetics and fertility care, along with gynecological services. Rainbow Children's Hospital is built on a strong fundamentals of multidisciplinary approach with a full-time consultant uh, uh, engagement model uh, with a commitment of 24 by 7 service in a child-centric environment. We run India's largest academic training program for the pediatrics and the pediatric super specialties in the private healthcare sector, offering training uh, in DMV postgraduate training program as well as the fellowship programs in various specialties, including uh, intensive care services as well as pediatric super specialties. Historically, the strong momentum of the second quarter and third quarter the tapers down in the fourth quarter with the examination season and the beginning of the summer holiday vacations. However, this time the strong momentum witnessed in the second and third, third quarter continued into the fourth quarter across all the key operating metrics, including outpatient protocols, inpatient volumes, and occupancy. I am pleased to inform you that the company has delivered robust quarterly performance led by five patient footfalls across all hospitals. The revenues for the Q4 FI23 was uh, uh, 360 crores, 16 crores, which is a growth of 49.2% compared to the 212 crores, which is uh, uh, in, in uh, Q4 FI22. The EBITDA for Q4 FI23 was 98 crores, which is a growth of a 103% compared to the 48.1 crores in Q4 FI22, and the PAT for Q4 FI23 was 53.8 crores, which is a growth of 339% compared to the 12.2 crores in Q4 FI22. 
the occupancy for the quarter was 58.8%, which is significantly higher compared to the 39.6% in the corresponding quarter of the last year. The occupancy was higher compared to the even previous uh, quarter occupancy of 57.1%. This is as a result of continued momentum of Q3 and Q4 with the various uh, uh, illnesses, like uh, especially viral illnesses uh, in the community, which is leading to a kind of a, a increased footfall as well as in patient admissions. In particular, adenovirus was the most common cause was, uh, of pneumonia during the season where the children required uh, admissions for uh, admission for the longer uh, uh, period of periods of time. So coming to our uh, the addition of beds and expansion, and uh, we have recently added 100 bed hospital in financial district Hyderabad, uh, commenced its operations on 1st of March 2023. And already we are seeing a, a good traction of our patients as well as in patients. So we are going to add uh, 270 beds in the current financial year uh, in the various geographies in Hyderabad and Bangalore and Chennai. The central Hyder city Hyderabad, which is Himayat Nagar, we are coming up with a 60-bed spoke hospital and a new block of uh, uh, hospital close to the adjacent to the Hyderabad Nagar uh, existing hospital uh, is being built for the a growth opportunity because we've been extremely busy in that hospital, so that requires more beds. So that's going to come very soon. Ananagar, Chennai is coming up, we're coming up with the, coming up with the 80 beds. A brownfield 80 bed spoke hospital is coming in Bangalore in Sarjapur area. So an additional block with an outpatient department and an area facility at the Rainbow uh, Children's Hospital, LB Nagar, uh, spoke where to enhance the patient facilities at the existing hospital and also cater to the future growth at this hospital. We are adding a, a additional uh, space in this hospital to allow it to yield some more beds to that uh, demand, for the demand. These hospitals are expected to commence operations during the second half of the current financial year. And also there's another uh, uh, 160 beds are going to come in 18 to 20 months time. Uh, which are mainly in a 100-bed facility in Rajamandri, which is, Andhra, which is one of the an important city in Andhra Pradesh, uh, uh, and a spoke hospital in Hennur Crossroad in Bangalore city of 60 beds. So these are likely to come in about 18, 20 months' time. So work is in progress. So recently, the company participated in an e-auction held by HSVP, Haryana Shahari, because Pradhikaran, which is uh, uh, the government sites uh, for hospitals. So we've won the two bids. The one is in sector 44 with, uh, with 2.32 acres of the land, and another one is sector 56 of 1.25 acres of land. So in this both of kind of uh, uh, land parcels, we're going to build a greenfield hospitals. Then sector 44, which is very close to Goda city center and close to FMRI, we're going to kind of build a 300 bed facility, uh, uh, which is mainly a kind of a referral children's hospital with a tertiary quarter care services for children. So this hospital will be kind of a referral center uh, for multi-specialty pediatrics and prenatal care across Gurgaon and also Northern states, as well as international patients. The yeah, spoke hospital of 100 beds which will be built in sector 56, which is very close to the golf course road. And this is for the kind of rapidly growing affluent population of Gulgaon in the in golf, golf course road as well as golf course extension road. So this hospital will be uh, uh, primarily kind of providing 24 by 7 emergency services for children and as well as women with a large outpatients, obstetrics and pediatric inpatient services and the level 3 and ICU. With this expansion plan highlighted now, the Rainbow Group is comfortably placed to add 1,000 beds as envisioned in the business plan as outlined during the IPO and investor meetings earlier. We are, we are focusing now on execution of these projects in a time, timely manner. Coming to clinical excellence, so we have, uh, we have crossed an important mile, milestone of a million outpatients across the group. Perhaps we have actually done a 1.2 million footfalls of outpatients in the last financial year. 
Dr. Nageshwar Rao Koneti is the director of uh, Rainbow Children's Heart Institute. He's a leading cardiologist. He, he received a patent for a, a device named Konar MF. This device is to close the, the heart holes for children with cardiac defects. This is being used across 60 countries. We are very proud of him uh, come, to come up with such a uh, cost-effective uh, uh, device. Despite a large patient inflows, our doctors had published 100 papers, research papers, uh, in the last one year. It gives me immense satisfaction to see such an uh, academic interest among our doctors. We have successfully completed 20 liver transplant and five kidney transplants with excellent results. And after 20 liver transplants, we have only lost one child, and 19 of them actually gone home with a successful liver transplant. All five of them, the renal transplants, have done very well and got discharged. I take this opportunity to thank all my doctor colleagues and the paramedical staff who have put in an untiring effort to deal with such a large volumes at achieving excellent outcomes. So with a well laid out business plan, our priorities are now to strive harder to deliver robust clinical outcomes with the excellent uh, patient care, strengthen our the hubs with a multi-speciality and quaternary care, and also expand our hub and spoke model in Bangalore and Chennai are the main priorities. Before I pass on the mic to our CFO, uh, uh, for business update, I would like to uh, take this opportunity to welcome Mr. Sanjeev Sukumaran, who has joined us as a chief group chief operating officer, effective from 15th April 2023. Sanjeev has come from uh, uh, has more than 25 years of experience doing various senior manager roles across various industries. So we are very glad to have him with us. I now request Mr. Sanjeev. Sukumaran to introduce himself to the audience. Thank you, Dr. Ramesh. Uh, uh, good afternoon, everyone. I'm extremely pleased to have been given this opportunity by the chairperson and the board, and I really look forward to contribute to the success of this organization as we move forward in this ever exciting journey. Uh, I wish to bring in the 25 years of experience that I have in various industries and work closely with the board and the chairperson and the senior leadership team over here uh, to continue to grow the business as well as to continue to bring in excellence in clinical as well as operations. And I look forward to your continued support too. Thank you. And I hand it over to uh, Mr. Gauri Shankar now. Thank you, Sanjeev. <coughs> Good afternoon. So I would like to thank you all for taking your time and joining our earning call, earning a bit call. I'll now share some insights on our financials, financial performance during the period under review. Our quarterly performance, so revenue for Q4 uh, stood at uh, 316 crore as, and has grown by 49.2% compared to the corresponding quarter of the last financial year. EBITDA for Q4 FI23 stood at 98 crore and has grown by 103.62% compared to the corresponding quarter of the last financial year. EBITDA margins are at 30.91% in the current quarter as against 22.66% in the corresponding quarter last year. Expansion in EBITDA margin is an account of improved business and better operating leverage. PAT for Q4 FI23 stood at 53.86 crores and has grown by 339.34% compared to the corresponding quarter of the last financial year. Past margin are 17% in the current quarter and as again 6% in the corresponding quarter last year. Our OP and IP volume for the current quarter has grown by 48% and 57% over the corresponding period of FI22. We have recorded 59% occupancy during the quarter. Our matured hospital has witnessed 67% occupancy and new hospital has witnessed 41% occupancy during fourth quarter. Our, our return on capital employed and return on equity stands at 24.61% and 25.36% on full year basis for FI23. And our fair mix between cash and insurance stands at 52% and 48%. 52% is cash and 48% is credit. 
during the Q4, the company has incurred about 35 crores as capital expenditure towards new projects, medical equipment, and other fixed assets. With this, I conclude my remark. We can now open the call for your valuable questions and suggestions. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Daman Dikerai from HSBC. Please go ahead. Hi, uh, good afternoon, and thank you for the opportunity. Uh, my first question is on your occupancy. So, fourth quarter obviously was very strong, uh, as Dr. Ramesh mentioned, uh, the momentum from viral uh, fever, et cetera, continued. So, uh, going ahead, how should we look at occupancy, especially for the mature hospital? Say, like, we don't see uh, such exceptional uh, cases coming due to some seasonal uh, viral fevers, et cetera. Yeah, uh, mature hospitals con will continue to clock the similar occupancies. And uh, what happens for us is that, you know, we have a, usually the quarter one generally a mutated in the sense of uh, occupancies wise because of children on holidays in the summer season. And uh, we we do kind of a more of surgical work in summer season. As we move into the second and third quarter, occupancies really peaks up, uh, uh, peaks up. So I think a mature hospital should be a big problem for occupancies because they are already kind of uh, well established. They will have a good traction of a patient uh, across the specialties as well as the pediatrics and obstetrics as well. So mature should be sustaining 60% plus occupancy. Like uh, obviously it could be better, but 60% plus is something we can definitely look at. Yeah, yeah, of course, you know, we, we clocked around 67% of occupancy uh, and mature hospitals in the uh, last financial year, which is pretty good. But, I mean, Rainbow is uh, something we do not do uh, much of government and other businesses, so it's uh, purely uh, uh, private uh, insurance and also the uh, the, uh, the cash patients. The payer mix is uh, very different from, uh, which is, it's very difficult to kind of uh, look at uh, our occupancies uh, comparing to uh, adult hospitals. Sure. Uh, my second question is uh, your average revenue per operating bed. So in FY23, uh, ARPOP grew around 4% year on year after adjusting for COVID vaccine benefit in the previous year. So uh, this looks a bit lesser than I think earlier we talked about sustaining uh, growth in high single digit. So how should we look at this uh, number ahead? And also, uh, if I look at your press release, uh, ARPO for new hospital looks better than mature hospitals in fourth quarter and full year. So uh, can you please explain this? We, if you discount the COVID vaccines from the previous year uh, of 22, that we have clocked about 48,000 uh, plus. Uh, I think we achieved that to about 4% uh, uh, growth. So that's what actually we have guided about 4, 4, 4 to 5% growth of RPAP year on year. So uh, when you look at the, uh, the new hospitals, uh, which is the uh, RPAPs are about 49,000 extra, because what happens in new hospitals is that you know, they kind of uh, are focused on a very uh, small area of business with uh, uh, more of a deliveries and more of ICUs, less occupancies. That skews, that skews more towards a higher RPOPs. When you get a occupancy levels increased, uh, the hospitals may choose that get moderated. Okay. Uh, my last question is on uh, your SPF yield. So obviously on the EBITDA level, you have been uh, like uh, you have been delivering one of the best margin across listed hospitals. But if I look at the SPF yield, uh, my suggestion, uh, my calculation suggests is it should be around 1%. So that looks like a very uh, less for the kind of margin which you make on your business. So uh, can you explain it and how should we look at uh, SPS yield uh, going ahead as uh, some of your key uh, units uh, reach maturity? Uh, I'm very sorry. I did not, not understand the question. Yeah. Uh, it's about what uh, yield on uh, you're taking the free cash flow or... Uh, 
uh, yeah, free cash flow, yeah. Uh, so yield, uh, yield is coming around 1% uh, for FY23, uh, despite uh, like having such healthy margin. So if you can explain like why it should be so low and how should we look at uh, uh, in coming future, uh, coming period. Um, I think you know your uh, we we will uh, take take this question later, uh, Raminti. If you don't mind. Just okay, sure. Thank you. I'll get back. We we time. need uh, not little more understanding on this. We'll take it later. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. A reminder to you: if you wish to ask any questions, please enter star and one. The next question is from the line of Pansi Desai from J.P. Morgan. Please go ahead. Yeah, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for taking my questions and uh, congratulations on good set of numbers again. Uh, so my question is on uh, the Gurugram uh, acquisition, uh, you know, that uh, we have announced. So this is a greenfield expansion. Um, you know, this is very different from our uh, previous strategy where, you know, we have uh, expanded on a very asset line manner. So uh, what are your thoughts, uh, you know, in terms of, you know, acquiring these lands out there? Uh, and did you evaluate, uh, you know, uh, having leasehold properties instead of going for uh, outright acquisitions? Yeah, Ms. Bansi, we have actually been evaluated for a fairly long period. And third is probably in uh, Gurugram with the rental costs, what's there. And also the effective utilized, uh, utilization of the space, what you rent, is a very, very low because almost 40% of the rental space will be invisible because of loading. So therefore, kind of when we worked out, it's probably better to kind of buy the land and build a greenfield project. So we have a cash on the balance sheet, so we kind of are taking that as an advantage. So uh, we got the land parcels in the key areas which we wanted. Uh, uh, we will be kind of, it may take a year, 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 year and a half extra to do the greenfield project, but that, that actually uh, positions us better to build a, a modern hospitals in the places like Gurgaon, where we envisage uh, to build a, uh, the Tulia referral hospital for uh, multi-specialty referral hospital for children in Gulgaon of 300 beds, uh, and also a stroke hospital in a rapidly growing uh, uh, golf course and golf course extension road. I think I'm quite happy with what uh, uh, how it panned uh, 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 out. Uh, I'm quite kind of uh, it, of course it takes some time to do uh, this project. Um, I'm quite happy about uh, the way things are progressing. Okay, and given this is from uh, Haryana government, uh, do we need to reserve beds here for uh, economically weaker section, or, or are there any such uh, terms of agreement with the government? So it's a, most of the hospitals in in Gurugram have got the similar clause. Uh, uh, if there's a specialty hospitals, there were ten percent of the beds uh, are allocated for the economically or uh, on the CGHS rates uh, for super specialty hospitals. And uh, general hospitals, so they, they will have kind of 20 percent. Since I'm going to build a super specialty children's hospital, I think I can uh, uh, negotiate on that. It's not a totally free bet, uh, Bansi. They will pay you uh, no, on your uh, tariff, uh, there is a discounted tariff. They get about some 20 percent discount. On that rate, they will pay for the super specialty hospital. Okay, and on those rates, are you still able to recover some of your fixed costs? We can do that. So it's unlike uh, the Delhi DDA, where you have to give totally free that you know the 25 percent and the 10 percent of IP with 25 percent of OP totally free. Here it is not so actually. So we can definitely you know we can get a better rate. So the super specialty hospitals are uh, given a better rate by the Haryana government. Okay, and uh, the funding for this project uh, will be largely met through internal accruals. Yes. Yeah. Um, okay. In fact, we have we have taken you know, we have allocated some money from IPO as well, but you know we can meet uh, everything through internal accrual. Okay, so you highlighted actually uh, you know 450 crores of investments uh, you know for this asset over the next uh, three three and a half years. So I'm assuming uh, you know 160 odd crores out of this would be purely for the land. So the balance uh, amount would be, uh, you know, it basically translates into a capex per bed of 70 lakhs or so. Is that correct? I think it probably costs. We need to see the how, uh, uh, I mean, uh, probably once we kind of have a design on those things, we'll probably have a better idea about capex of the bed. 
I think I would see it as a probably closer to the kind of 90 lakh crore rupees per bed. Because in the, uh, if you are building a bed for future as a greenfield project, obviously mm. it will go as to be a high end hospital. Yeah, so this this 90 lakhs uh, is basically uh, inclusive of land cost, are you saying? No, uh, exclusive of land cost. Probably oh. it's going to be about 1.2 to 1.25 crores, that's what I am. Including land. Including land, land I'm researching it. Okay, so sir, in that case, um, you know, how should we view uh, uh, the break-even timelines? Um, I understand, you know, Gurugram as a market is definitely, uh, you know, better paying market, so our pops also will be equally good. Uh, compared to the rest of the regions, but uh, just in terms of uh, break-even timelines, uh, should that differ uh, given, you know, this is the capex? I think what we need to, we would be working out is that, you know, how are we positioning this hospital and what is the kind of a construct of this hospital in terms of, uh, uh, if it's a normal children's hospital with intensive care services, so you don't need 300 beds, okay? Mm. So what I'm, I am emphasizing is to see that this is a uh, this is a uh, super specialty children's hospital with all the pediatric specialties, large intensive care services and quarantine care services to start in Gurgaon. So there's a good, uh, significant international opportunity for children to treat in this uh, uh, hospital as well. So when you look around, uh, look at the, look at the opportunity, and uh, when we are building the hospital for today, probably we need to kind of uh, 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 establish a hospital as a super specialty. It's almost like a multi specialty hospital capex. It won't differ. If I am doing a children's hospital or stroke hospital, yeah, definitely will come down capex up significantly. When I'm looking at a hospital of that stature, it's capex almost like a multi-specialty hospital. Obviously, that you know, it all depends on the kind of teams which I'm going to bring in, kind of a, uh, facilities what I'm going to provide, and also what kind of a treatment offers what I'm going to offer. So that's uh, how it's going to pan out. Obviously, with our my experience of 20 years of building children's health care, what I what what we have in Hyderabad today. If I position myself uh, uh, a Gurgaon uh, uh, referral center, yeah, obviously that's we required to build a 300 bed hospital in Gurgaon. So this is what uh, background statistics have done. So another hospital, which is which is about 100 bed hospital, which is a uh, which is going to be like a uh, children's hospital with maternity, ICU, some those things. Pansi, do you have any further questions? No, no. Uh, uh, this is clear. This is very helpful, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Pansi. Thanks. The next question is from the line of Pratesh Chheda from Lucky Investments. Please go ahead. Sir, uh, we quite didn't understand uh, this uh, this business model change. Uh, earlier, we used to have 50 lakh rupees a bed as the capex, and we have a combination of specialty and spoke hospital today. In our, uh, you know, targeted regions or core regions of uh, Chennai, Bangalore, and uh, Hyderabad, uh, how will this Gurgaon investment be different uh, from it, uh, and why is it different? And what are the how also how will the RPOB and the OR change in this kind of investment? So. Uh, well, obviously, what I'm looking at is that you know, in Gurgaon, uh, is a, I see Gurgaon as a, not as a micro market. I see Gurgaon as a kind of a hub for the North, uh, NCR uh, plus North. So when I'm presenting myself with the 20 years of experience in uh, uh, children's health care, uh, uh, we do need to build something which is of uh, uh, that reputation, credibility of uh, uh, providing a comprehensive care for children. So therefore, it, uh, it is definitely a uh, differs from a routine children's hospital, which we have a capex uh, uh, as a brownfield project. It's a greenfield project, and it's going to be a high capex project. It's going to be a multi-specialty hospital, which is almost like a, your capex is going to be like a super specialty adult hospital. So that's why it's going to be definitely our pops will definitely be a very closer to the multi-specialty. Uh, uh, and also the uh, the surgical work and specialty work is going to be closer to multi specialty hospitals. This is what I need to uh, in Gurgaon uh, hospital. Thank you. 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 Thank you
you have a hyderabad hub hospital also right yeah. uh, right and you would have a bangalore hub hospital as well so there what has been your capex per bed is it uh, yeah. hyderabad uh, hub hospital is about my capex was about 70 lakhs per bed which is a brownfield project which has been a kind of a semi warm semi warm shell so uh, my chennai or bangalore hospital was kind of a hub hospital but we continue to uh, you know put a capex as we are kind of adding more specialties in bangalore so in gurgaon i am going to do everything at one go which is why it is a, a different hospital everything at one go so if you had to put a greenfield today let's say in bangalore or chennai or hyderabad what it would have come up to and okay. for a greenfield like or for a specialty center like 300 bed of gurgaon how many spokes can you put then surrounding that hospital um you meant to say that with that money how many spokes can be done no no not with that money that 300 bed hospital can support how many spokes yeah. gurgaon we don't see gurgaon is a small area as a kind of say this is a this is where we are going to be in uh, uh, right next to huda city center that's the central point from there we can drive anywhere about in 15 minutes time okay. this spoke which is going to come in closer to the golf golf course extension road in the golf course road so that will that will cater for the rapidly growing golf course golf course extension road uh, and uh, a golf course road area so we will have a sufficient number of beds uh, uh, in gurgaon uh, for 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 a longer period of time okay. and how much does a uh, super specialty now cost if you had to set up a greenfield in uh, let's say hyderabad or bangalore if you had to set up so you have to set up the, the super specialty hospital it cost the same probably it may cost a little more because the land cost here if i to buy a private land uh, it would be a kind of a, a probably it will cost couple 20 lakhs more okay so excluding land it will cost about uh, say 80 lakhs so the current uh, hyderabad as well as uh, bangalore hub hospital we have set up you know 5 years and 7 years back actually so that time it has costed us say uh, 70 60 lakhs and then you pay add upon that inflation also and then this hospital it will come next to one or two years because you just take permission with the thing construction so obviously you will end up somewhere about uh, close to 80 90 lakhs per bed actually excluding land okay uh sir on the arcop side uh, you didn't answer whether uh, the the specialty hospital in gurgaon will have a arcop you said it will be closer to a normal specialty hospital so yeah. there we have range so max healthcare is at 60000 rupees arcop but someone like kim is at 25 30000 rupees arcop so which one we should take we should take 60000 rupees arcop for you Well, we right now we are on forty-eight thousand R pop, so we are we are not very uh, low end hospitals. We are high end hospitals. Yes, we are like Kims and Narayan. Yes. We are more uh, Apollo and uh, uh, Max Apollo to yes. start. Max is kind of a dominantly and uh, NCR hospital in the uh, city based hospital. So a lot of surgical work being done. So which is why their R pops are high. So as a children's hospital, which we like to position ourselves to be. not a dark pops we want to kind of offer for children of what adult is getting uh, in a multi specialty hospital for a child this is uh, as a uh, as a children's hospital group what we would like to embark in ncr so it will be higher than your current dark pop of 48000 yeah, yeah i would think so so it's too early to for me to guess that that far and last thing sir this arpom and or which you have reported in fy23 uh based on the capacity that we have how much or increase can you see further on your existing setup of 16 to 15 that you have because you are a bit seasonal so there are two quarters the seasons is very high so you have higher or and couple of quarters with lower occupancy so what is the blended annual number that we should look at i'll tell you what see i mean we have been last year as guided that you now we would do a kind of a 18 to 20% of a uh, uh, top line operating revenue and uh, i would say and that will still be high teens of uh, growth this uh, current year also but i would like to also in, uh, emphasize on one fact that you know we are adding almost uh, 270 beds plus we recently added 100 plus 50 and the total of 430 new beds are going to be there 
of course there are going to be in existing areas where our reputation is at the highest level hyderabad bangalore and chennai the still when you have so many of new beds your growth top line growth will be fine there will be some degree of moderation on the margins so the still we'll see that you know we are we are in a kind of a, a area yes. which is, is not a new geography so so, uh, my, so so my question was that on the 1650 bed occupancy at 55% right for fr23 this 55 can go to what number can you reach 60 plus percent but well, if we stop expanding then it could go to 65% also but we continue okay. to add uh, beds uh, for opportunity and okay. also build our business and footprint okay. and what is the risk of a price cap if any by government on pediatrics hospital we have seen that happening in non pediatrics uh, on certain uh, elective procedures but do you ever think of a regulation by any chance in pediatrics so uh, bit unlikely because pediatrics is because is an emergency based hospital and it is not a packages hospital where you got a cardiac renals and those things our packaging is very very small which is why we are probably a better off in that but the government is doing all the times you know dpco drugs still you know this year also the gone quite a significant number of drugs so government is doing its own way and insurance companies are doing their own way while still we continue to have to do business that's the life thank you much and all the best wishes thank you thank you thanks so much thank you the next question is from the line of arpit shah from salian asset please go ahead hello hello yes yeah, yeah just wanted to understand the sequential jump in other expenses of this photo this fraud where i'm taking hello yeah okay. yes the other expenses you know between the two quarter december to uh, march so it has increased by 16 crores so this is you know due to that uh, we have uh, taken the due to expanded business you know we have taken little more of ecl provision of about 2 crores and then there is a uh, no uh, kind of bad debts and uh, the the, pro, the return of which we have not done in other quarter there is a one crore of uh, no return of right of share plus we have uh, you know incurred some expenses for our jca repair and maintenance now we are our banjara hills uh, flagship hospital we are going for jc accreditation and then we have done because always we do lot of repair and maintenance in the q4 uh, because we are we will just prepare the hospital for you know managing the season and uh, there are a couple of other promotion business promotion also we have been got so that's where it's about uh, 16 crore q4 always would be having a higher other expense number uh, on a regular yes. basis right yeah so you, we do little more of uh, r and m in this q4 so that is the time we get a little bit of uh, free time normally r is kind of a push for us for us to kind of uh, get ready for hospitals for the next next year yeah. also we have opened a couple of hospitals in the last uh, quarter so like at strolling and lur as well as financial district so some of the expenses are there actually on the running and maintaining the hospital hospital maintenance and then We do a little more of marketing for those hospitals that has come in this year. Good. And if you can break up the number of beds addition every year, let's say from FI 24, 25, 26, what will be the number of bed additions? I've uh, already explained to you in the presentation. So what's going to come is that uh, there will be about 270 beds are going to come in the, this current financial year. So we already added about 150 beds in the last financial year. So... This is uh, what another 150 beds uh, and 60, 160 are going to come in next 18 months time. Uh, these are all going to come. Most of the hospitals are going to come in the southern part of India. Our uh, the the 400 beds, which probably will take about three and three to three and a half years time. Really fast in execution, but I think we we'll have to take that kind of time for the green fields uh, in uh, Gurgaon in. Three, three to three and a half. Thanks. So mm-hmm. that's the landscape at the moment. But we always try to identify some, um, you know, the uh, schools and town fields, uh, the areas. Uh, we, we we are negotiating some of the cities also in the neighbourhood, like a uh, uh, regional spokes like in Nellore and Coimbatore. But when they come into kind of reality, I will see it. Mm-hmm. Good. And the insurance price hikes, which were uh, uh, was supposed to be effective. Q4 for Hyderabad. So they were affected for how many months this quarter? 
so uh, so they have been effective only for last 15 days uh, of uh, last quarter the entire price hike will be there in this current year if you can just quantify that number for everyone uh the so, price hike which would come for f24 so uh yes yeah, so for the next year if you look at uh, our hyderabad uh, insurance uh, business should contribute about uh, 15 to 20 crores uh, uh, between 15 crores to to that got it and for the gurugram project uh, where we are targeting about 450 crores of investment uh, and it could be ready by f26 or Uh, hey, what kind of ROC or what kind of payback we are targeting over there? But is it a very different kind of investment that we are making uh, other than what we have done before? So what kind of payback? Because if you see our ROC, they've been closer to uh, 25% or so. But what kind of ROC we are targeting in this new greenfield project? I think the payback of such a high capex hospital in the industry works about 70-80 years. And that is what you are targeting? Is that something... we uh, yes it, it may take because you know uh, it, it, it's a uh, capex intensive you know, project and uh, definitely so we may do it in about uh, eight years time we should do it we should okay that yeah so eight years yes got it got any guidance on the revenue and the margin for for any sorry i don't think any green field project period period will be a uh, five years or so it is impossible because uh, even multi specialty i have been talking to by uh, peer groups and those things about 70 years is a uh, uh, mm-hmm. super performance for the payback for uh, 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 greenfield projects of uh, 200 to more than 200 by hospitals the smaller hospitals may be different but the larger hospitals will take some time got it. any revenue or margin guidance for fy24 I think so. As I earlier uh, told you, see, we have guided when the, in the being a first year. I was very clear that I needed to give a guidance. I, we kind of guided markets to kind of 350 crores of EBITDA, 11 crores of 11 crores of top line, which we we have kind of done very well. I've done over exceeded that. So the current financial year, I think it has already been uh, with our larger investors. We we did actually uh, uh, put it as both business plan the IPO time and uh, in the uh, initial investor calls uh, for about 420 crores of uh, uh, EBITDA for the 2324. So I think with the uh, what's important is the top lines are not going to be a big problem because we would achieve it. Uh, it was growth will be the kind of five teens to uh, 20. and the we have to look at the how the uh, margins are going to be because we have this, this is the first time we are going to have almost like a 400 plus beds or uh, new hospitals new beds uh, coming into the city but my i am little optimistic because there are uh, quite a few number of beds are coming are built for the demand demand sake right and kind of a, uh, a future opportunity so let's see how it goes it's going to be difficult for me to do a quarter on quarter guidance because it, it doesn't work that way if i if i give you something yeah. i don't want to yeah. run and year on year it's a multi year business honestly it's a multi year business and it's a growing story it's a huge opportunity as a children's hospital to build in this country i mean when you look at the developed countries to us where we are we are nowhere so i mean rainbow is one which has been building it i think an opportunity for me is to build this model strong it's a multi year and definitely yeah, people are going to be happy with their uh, returns uh, on a longer term basis got got thank you so much thank you thank you the next question is from the line of alankar karuti from kotak securities please go ahead hi good afternoon everyone uh, sir would you agree that uh, incidence of viral infections in the pediatric segment was a bit higher than usual in fy23 Oh, definitely, uh, Mr. Alankar. Because what has happened was that uh, children have been, you know, uh, almost like another kid, like a homebound for nearly two years' time. What has happened was when they have come out, COVID has never been a big problem. So for children, COVID perhaps didn't really uh, touch too much of uh, complications, except few children had some cardiac and issues and other problems. Uh, majority of them not gone through complications like adults or you know including death and those things 
that because the longer periods they have women kept in the uh, houses and uh, routine seasonal illnesses have not been kind of a uh, occurred to them so they have not built immunity uh, sufficiently to deal with the routine viral infections normally adenovirus is something a simple severe uh, seasonal infection so this come as a kind of a, a surprise across the globe it's kind of a uh, now we do see in a adenovirus infection every season it's a kind of a, it is a, it's probably a kind of a in, in the western world it, what they have seen is about five times increase in adenovirus infections so leading to admission sickness all those things i would think that in india it's much bigger no there's no statistical data on that it is a much more uh, many fold increase in the adenovirus infections which your children have been very sick actually with some of them requiring intensive care and they presented with the pneumonia so which is why you see in the for third quarter we really struggled for beds and also our patients our patients been chocked a lot with the um, not only adenovirus the very 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 other virus most of them all of them normally they are trivial but their presentation was very pronounced because of the uh, staying at homes for longer period and they have not acquired the normal immunity what they are supposed to get year on year understood sir so in that case uh, what is giving us confidence that we will be able to grow uh, over the 61% occupancy reported in fi23 in the mature hospitals yes of course so so just wanted to understand the reason sir uh, so on that uh, relatively elevated base of uh, higher footfalls in fi23 due to acute infections viral infection uh what is giving us that confidence sir, that we will continue to grow occupancies in the mature hospitals no i mean at 60 per, 61% let me be honest with you that we struggled for the beds we really struggled for the beds what what annoys me is that you know when patients come i won't be able to give a bed and that's not good because in a in a children's hospital it's a very emotional state in some if somebody needs an admission i'm not able to accommodate them it is not right actually so therefore this is business one has to accept it you know i mean if i can clock a occupancy of 65% and a study state in a in a mature hospital 65% i would do the revenues or rebita as much as other hospitals in some paper because i don't have a warm and business i don't have a people sitting uh, in the hospital for longer periods our alas are low the moment the child gets better moment someone delivers they are ready to go home any time soon moment they recover so this is a different business model and uh, we do need to build a capacity for the opportunity and also to have a more no- more number of patients treated this is how i look at the uh, uh, children's hospital so Uh, please no, don't ever compare children's hospital occupancies with other hospitals uh okay uh the so second question is and you know, if you look at uh, our experience of uh, lees versus uh, greenfield uh, till now except vizag all our hospitals uh, have been leased now given the upcoming greenfield one in uh, gurgaon uh can you take us through uh, your experience in vizag over the past 3 4 years and how would you compare it to your expansions across the other lease facilities vizag well, is a small city i don't think uh, 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 i am not looking at gurgaon as a gurgaon city of 50 60 lakh population or uh, 30 lakh population or whatever it is i am looking at gurgaon as a kind of a hub medical hub for the the northern india and also for international this is how i am trying to position this hospital for uh, uh, for children health care so if you if we look at the number of beds in uh, gurgaon is a uh, uh, huge already and there are going to be many more beds many more thousands of beds are going to come into gurgaon because in the landscape of ncr to look at it gurgaon is probably a place uh, uh, for health easy and secure destination that's what uh, every healthcare leader thinks about it whether it's the max or apollo or medanta or forty uh, things about it so i think i completely ag- ag- agree to that that because it's the proximity of uh, gurgaon to the many north indian states and are still unlike southern india even today the the density are focused completely of strategic care and advanced care for north 
So people don't come from Bangalore to Hyderabad, Hyderabad to Chennai for any any treatment, any treatment because they are well developed. Still, people come from all over the northern uh, states, uh, capital cities, or rest of the uh, rest of the cities to Delhi only for the all advanced treatment. So therefore, we need to look at a Delhi opportunity, NCR opportunity as a northern India opportunity of six seven states. Plus international. So this is how I I conceptualize this thought, this thought process to say that if we are going to be uh, we are we need to be there in a place where the, the uh, largest healthcare hub uh, is uh, is Gurgaon. So therefore we need to be there to kind of defend children's healthcare. And uh, uh, would it be fair to assume that uh, we would uh, continue to actively scout for facilities in Delhi and Noida? Sorry, I didn't understand. Uh, would it be fair to assume that uh, despite this uh, Gurgaon announcement, uh, we would continue to acti actively scout for facilities in Delhi city and Noida? Uh, I think uh, Delhi proper, I probably won't be kind of looking at uh, any green fields, very unlikely. And uh, Noida, of course, if there is a, it won't be a, as big as this one. I, I think Noida doesn't uh, would probably require about 100, 125 bed children's hospital, and uh, this will be the hub hospital for the entire Delhi NCR. Fair enough, sir. Uh, and sir, sorry, just one last question with your permission. Um, is there any change in seasonality patterns over the years? Uh, I mean, we have data only for the last three years, but if you look at uh, uh, the drop in uh, quarter four margins for the previous two fiscals versus FY23. Clearly, uh, F fourth quarter FY23 has been a bit of an outlier, and you explain the reasons for the same. But just, uh, I mean, uh, from a longer trend standpoint, wanted to understand uh, have you seen over the years any change in seasonality across quarters uh, for our business? I think uh, right from 2002, we have been seeing it. We have seen the variations uh, of. Uh, uh, seasonalities, uh, you know, uh, of uh, uh, particularly when we had a dengue outbreaks in the 2002 to 2007, 9, and we have seen the seasonality got tweaked. Again, we have seen swine flus going up to the summer, and uh, the season seasonality got shifted. So it all depends on that, you know, the nature and rains and various other factors which actually influences that the abnormal pattern of the viruses and also the infections uh, prevails in the community. Sure, sir. Thank you and all the best. Thanks, Arankar. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Prashant Kuti from Sundram Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, uh, thank you for the opportunity and congrats on a good set of numbers. Uh, so first question is regard to the occupancy part of it. Uh, when you highlighted that on the matured beds, we typically would be doing about 60-65%. Uh, even, uh, please correct me if I'm wrong, but even in a relatively, uh, uh, let's say, a muted quarter, which typically Q4 is, uh, we still have managed to deliver a very good occupancy numbers. Uh, you highlighted that there would be some uh, one-off uh, because viral infection is high and all. But incrementally, uh, can you actually assume 65 to 70, 65 to 67% being a, a norm for uh, the matured hospital? So you would like to know the, the 67 percent for the mature hospitals in uh, in uh, without being any seasons, right? Is yeah, because yeah, exactly, yeah, without being the season, yeah. Okay. Well, the thing is, the clocking over 60 percent frequency is more important. Whether it is a uh, whether the four five percent delta is always going to be a, a, a debatable. Question is that you know what kind of case mix you have in the hospital is more important. Sometimes we had about 55% occupancies. We had done a bigger revenues than actually a 65% occupancy. What is the, see, sometimes you, have, you may have a huge season and uh, your, your occupancies are very high, but some, the, your, when your beds are not occupied uh, with intensive care services, then the revenue is very, very, very minuscule. So it, it all depends on the case mix and also sickness and, uh, uh, these are the things that determines the overall your revenue generation in a in a in a children's hospital. But suffice to say that when you're talking about at least you're looking for at least above 60% plus kind of a 
uh, number for the for the matured hospitals. Yeah, yeah. Uh, be it any point of time, be it a season or non-season point of time. Yeah, yeah, right. Mature hospital will clock 60 plus percent. Uh, Understood. Uh, sure, got it. Uh, uh, so another point was that, uh, again, uh, the reference point was typically the fourth quarter of a year usually used to be slightly uh, more muted compared to the second and the third quarter. Uh, this, however, uh, this this quarter, however, some seems to be a bit of a, a bit of an aberration. We have done really good numbers and both top line as well as an EBITDA front. Uh, should one take this as a more a bit of a norm in terms of uh, uh, from a reference point, or uh, uh, is, uh, again, is there are there any one-off elements over here? Because as compared to our Q4 21 or Q4 22, I understand those had some uh, impact of uh, COVID and all, but uh, because this is a quarter where uh, there was no such uh, uh, things, is that a far more uh, normalized quarter for us? Yeah. Yeah. Well, so I wouldn't take any quarter as a reference point. I would take in a overall and the year as a reference point. The reason is year to year is uh, I can uh, fairly talk about it with uh, because it's, a, it's, a, it's going to be impossible in an emergency based hospital to say talk about uh, consistency of quarter and quarter. They can, they can keep shifting to uh, one quarter to other quarter. But overall in a year we can kind of uh, envisage to say that this is what we can do. As I earlier uh, uh, gentleman asked me question, that's what I said. I mean, we our growth trajectory will continue to be high teens towards 18, 90 percent, and uh, 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 the revenue, and we will have to kind of see which parts are going to be uh, uh, higher, which parts are going to be moderated. It's a, it's a, it's almost like a guessing. I'm sorry, I wouldn't like to do it. I'm a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> sure, sure. Um, Sure, I'll get that point. But the reason for asking this, sir, uh, typically if you look at it, uh, overall, uh, the EBITDA numbers uh, look to be far more superior. Uh, and uh, obviously, it's a function of the mature hospitals doing well. But uh, again, a point to that, uh, is, the, is the newer hospitals, uh, you're not seeing too much of change in the occupancies over there. I understand that those are relatively new and will take their time. Uh, but are we seeing acceleration in that happening uh, where the occupancies could kind of jump up faster over there? Uh, I mean, is, uh, have the paybacks for these uh, uh, spokes which you have which recently added or which you are going to add, uh, have they been uh, kind of coming off? Oh, definitely. See, what happens is, you know, business. for example, in Hyderabad. So Hyderabad is kind of a, it's a matured market for us. I am doing more and more bets in Hyderabad for a demand. So I wouldn't have any problems. I mean, for me, if I to start a hospital in Hyderabad, you know, I wouldn't worry about even uh, what is that, you know, it's going to take burn any cash. It will definitely not burn cash per se itself. So when I do a kind of a geography with a, with a newer, uh, still we're building our uh, reputation like Chennai and those things, it may take a year. When second spoke to third spoke, it'll get better. Fourth to fifth spoke, it get, get even better. So. That is overall reputation of your hospital or brand uh, or how strong your clinical, uh, these are all things going to matter. So today we are sitting in Hyderabad. We, I mean, I know concerns to add, we are we're almost getting closer to 1,000 beds in Hyderabad by end of the year, almost 940 or 950 beds. So it's a, I never imagined that we're going to do so many beds, but I continue to do it because there's a need and there's demand. So we're going to Bangalore, yeah, we're going to get to the 500 beds, and uh, still opportunity is there, so there's a lot of beds are there to build a business in those in Bangalore. Chennai, we clocked very well, so the hub hospital, second, third year, we done extremely well. Then we, that, that's why we added kind of a, uh, one more spoke, and we, one more spoke is going to come this year. So it all depends on how we have placed ourselves to do business, what is the reputation of the hospital, what are the medical doctors whom we have? These are all the determining factors the hospital to do well, and then the payback period will reduce significantly. So brownfield projects naturally, you know, you take much less payback period than uh, greenfield projects. So uh, this is how I look at our business. So when we are kind of such a strong business in South, so obviously uh, Delhi, when I'm going there, places like Gurgaon, where everyone is bullish about uh, uh, being a healthcare hub or uh, healthcare capital, definitely I need to be there because as a as a as a pioneer in children's healthcare. Sure. Which means that uh, in the next year or so, even the newer hospitals or in the next two years should see an increase or should see an acceleration in the occupancy numbers. 
yeah, that's what I'm, I, I expect to do. Sure, sure, definitely. And one last point, sir, uh, in terms of margins, uh, uh, it's been a very good year in terms of margins as well. You did highlight that you are putting up almost about 400 odd uh, beds between the one which already added 150 and then another 250 in the next year. Uh, given what you spoke about the occupancy front, uh, should, should one assume that margins really shouldn't correct much uh, compared to what you would have earlier thought? I think when you have so many beds being added, that there will be some degree of margin pressure will be there. Sure, fair point, fair point. But I'm just asking, earlier you were probably uh, working from a 30-31% kind of a number. You already clocked in about 34, so I'm just asking from that perspective. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure there will be some. We always say, you know, the pre days of 25%, because whenever we expanded earlier also, we have seen that, you know, it is clocking at that rate. So, the last two years, yeah. Bed addition was less, that's why you know, it has uh, gone to that 34 35%. So, we are Understood. saying that it will be 30%, you know, post 10 days. Uh, it's doable considering that you have a bucket of good number of matured hospital and then you are adding new addition. So, 30% is doable. Understood. Sure. Thank you so much, sir, and all the very best to you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Dhawan Shah from Alpha Accurate Advisors. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thanks for the opportunity, sir. So my question is related, you know, uh, to the uh, cost of medical consumable. If I look at, you know, on the YOY business, it's been down by around 20 odd percent. And what yes. is the other cost is more or less up by 25 percent. So just wanted to understand your, yeah. your thoughts on this part because our, uh, I think the inpatient volume growth was roughly... 25% so how should we calculate uh, these two uh, uh, heads uh, if you can help on this thing the consumable is always about 14-15% actually so last year we have done a COVID vaccination which is a less margin business compared to hospital business so that's why it was about 20% now it has come to normal because of normal hospital business it has come down so you can take, you know, going forward, in, our, in normal circumstances, it will be, even you see the earlier year trend also, it's about 14-15%. Okay, and what about the other cost? Other cost is, you know, uh, it, it ranges about, you know, 7%, uh, 7 to 8%, it will not be more than that, actually. We have, see, again, what is that, you know, because of that, the, the professional fee is grouped separately, so obviously it's about uh, seven, uh, six, seven percent, and then including the bed addition, everything, and uh, it it gives us an opportunity for a better operating leverage. Also, it can come down if you don't add, it will come down. Otherwise, it remains it stands there. No, but if I, you know, even the professional fee to the doctors is already excluded in the financial statement, but still, you know, if yeah. I do the math of seven eight percentage on the eleven seventy four crore. It comes to around 82 odd crore, uh, so it's uh, more than that. Around 200 crore is the other cost for the year. Okay. So, no doctors is 20 percent, 22 percent, 22 percent doctors. Hey, uh, you 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 got clarification or uh, no, 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 no. So basically, you know. Uh, as you mentioned that the other cost should be 78% of sales excluding the professional fee so professional fee line item is already you know uh, apart from uh, other expenditure so if i do the math other cost comes to around 17 odd percent for the fy23 as against 7 to 8 percent you are highlighting so uh, is there anything i'm missing over here no, no, you are not uh, missing anything actually. It's about, I think, uh, 200 and the gross, no? So, yeah, it's about 17%. Uh, I think, uh, yeah, that's right only. Right only. Okay. So, how should we assume? Because I think the other cost for the year has been increased. So, any any uh, fixed cost uh, into this part or any? Uh, we have we have added two more hospitals in this uh, you know, uh, financial year, you know, late in the last quarter. And uh, there is an increase in marketing expenses as well and you know, repair and maintenance. So that's where you will see compared to FI 22 to 23 on a full year basis, there is an increase actually. Okay. So on yearly basis, I think the advertisement and the repair maintenance cost should be how much uh, if we compare? So on an average, we, we spend about you know, uh, between 2 to 3 percent we spend on the marketing and you know, business promotion expenses. 
okay on the on the top line and the repair and maintenance cost so that will be about uh, uh, 200% okay 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 and the second question is about you know the procurement timing so would like to understand about the new hospital that we we are adding roughly 400 odd beds uh, in the next 2 to 3 years so what is the normal procurement timing for uh, new ones and uh, any ebitda per bed uh, number for the mature versus the new hospital that you can give and the how do you see the mix uh, going forward in the next 2 to 3 years because uh, right now around 70% of the uh, oral bed is from the mature one and given that we are adding uh, 400 500 beds so how do you see the overall mix uh, going forward I think it will become 50-50 percent because we are adding a significant number of beds this year. So uh, it will kind of become a 50-50 percent mature and uh, mature. I need to see that how many are going joining mature group also. Some of the hospitals may join. So the the because of the bed additions and those things, uh, the mature uh, maturing hospitals will little bit change to. Last two years, and the COVID year, we not expanded much. And last year, there's only up to 50 beds been added. Uh, so therefore, if we have, we don't see much of uh, 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 in the maturing beds. I think this year will change significantly to the uh, maturing hospital number. Only one hospital. So only one. Only Madhukar Rainbow Children's Hospital will move. Only one, one hospital. So there will be more on the, the new hospital. Type. New hospital group. New hospitals group. In terms of, uh, you know, you asked other thing is about uh, break-even points and those things. Hyderabad, we do a kind of a break-even in the first year itself. It's not a problem for us. In the Chennai and Bangalore, will take one and a half years, 12 to 18 months' time. It's a um, uh, break-even. Depends on the location, size of the hospital and those things. That's how we look at it, uh, our break-even. And the EBITDA part made for a matured versus the new hospital? So we don't calculate uh, so at the EBITDA uh, per bed level. Yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be okay. difficult. Okay. 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 So given that you know the mix would be. Thank you, sir. I would request you to please join the queue sure. back for further questions. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Neha Mankuria from Bank of America. Please go ahead. Yeah, my questions have been answered. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Aditya Kandelwal from SIMPL. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, sir. Thanks for the opportunity. So, in uh, your matured assets, if you look at the occupancy in the Hyderabad cluster, we were at around 65% uh, based on a DRHP. But for Bangalore or Chennai, we were at around 50%. So, just wanted to know how has, it, uh, has the occupancy ratio for Bangalore and Chennai improved? They have improved overall, and uh, we don't do actually uh, 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 the city wise cluster. We look at the matured and the uh, maturing hospital so hospital to hospital we don't really do it city city to city, city it becomes too complex for us to do uh, therefore um, they have definitely increased otherwise you wouldn't have clocked about 67 percent of the right and uh, in a mature hospital uh, you said our occupancy is around 60 to 65 percent so just wanted to understand if the future revenue growth for the company would come only from setting up new centers or there is scope for growth to come from mature centers as well no they come from both because mature hospitals will continue to grow in terms of uh, some occupancy and also price mix and also case mix definitely uh, they will continue to grow. What uh, Our experience is that you now we continue to grow in the mature hospital also in terms of revenue size. Okay. And uh, as for my calculation, our inpatient volume for our new centers, which was in the range of 3,800 to 3,900 in the last two quarters, has increased to 4,300 to 4,400 this quarter. So has this increase majorly come from our new centers open in Chennai and Hyderabad or our existing centers have also seen an increase? And now the, across all the new centers because of the, this, uh, the viral epidemic is uh, global actually. It's not a city, city, city. We have seen across the country and across the globe we have seen this uh, uh, viral infections in children. Right. Uh, okay. And our inpatient realization uh, Increase will primarily come from two factors, inflation and patient mix. 
we just wanted to understand what kind of increase can we expect from both these sectors going forward sorry i didn't get it the, the price increase you know we we are saying on an average our arpa will increase by about uh, 7 to 8% year on year so you can take about uh, to put together yeah, seven put to together seven to eight. this, this yeah. includes the uh, no case mix and uh, inflation okay 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 thank you thank you the next question is from the line of anish deora from nogura please go ahead yeah yeah thanks uh, so uh, for the gurga facility i mean it's a completely uh, it's a newer geography than south india where you are currently dominant so do you foresee any change in the doctor engagement model that you would have for the gurga facility uh, so in south india you have the doctor that are full time basis 24/7 availability kind of a thing so do you think that would be possible in the gurga region or do you are you looking at any other doctor engagement model for that uh, geography children's hospitals if you want to drive across the gold it is institutional model what i've told the fundamentals so you, you may actually have a different uh, engagement model uh, but it has to be a full time commitment doctors so that is a uh, that is a gold standard for children's hospitals so i think that we would work towards that i think uh, maybe price points may be different from uh, doctor payment uh, what expectations but the uh, but it children's hospital demands full time doctors to deliver quality and to deliver results understood so so probably you are indicating that uh, the doctor payments in the gurgaon region could be higher than what uh, the average would be in south india currently yeah your price points will be higher your doctor costs will be higher yeah we need to be a kind of a uh, uh, clear on that okay understood so thanks thanks thank you thank you the next question is from the line of kartik narayan from scp india advisors please go ahead uh firstly uh, congratulations not just on the on the numbers but also the clinical results i think it's, it's fantastic i most of my questions were answered i had a couple of uh, follow ons one is with respect to the 48% uh, growth that you've seen this quarter if you had to break that down into price increase and volume increase how much of that came from prices uh, either through insurance or cash prices price increases and how much from volume uh, that would be helpful i've done them not in the calculations i've definitely it is more of a uh, the volume volume driven as well as the kind of a, a the case mix yes as uh, i can already tell you that it's been a lot of intense care work and um, a lot of sick children so more of volume and also the case mix than price and this is and this is uh and if i were to look at the full year i mean since you mentioned earlier that it's better to look at the full year the 20% uh, year on year growth would you say it's similar is it mostly related to volume versus price yeah i think we have we have always delivered and a few in the pre it or the last 10 years time we delivered it i hope to do that so uh, uh yeah of course you know that's been our uh, we have done it so, still we always been saying that the high teens to 20 so the growth i would mm-hmm. think that it will be any problem for that okay and yes, just to add, just to add you know if you look at x of covid our our arpa has increased on an annual basis by 4% if you break down the 20% growth you know 4% has come from tariff and case mix and the rest has come from volume mix understood and so that helps and one question related to the full year numbers so if i look at fy22 versus 23 We had a, a strong 20% year-on-year growth, uh, but the doctor costs have uh, the professional fees to doctors was around 34%. So, has there been any change in terms of the way we have uh, uh, engaging with the doctors in the past year? I think there's because of a lot of new doctors being added uh, to the pool. Um, new doctors and also few new centers have come. As a new center, because our doctor engagement model is full time. Mm-hmm. So when you send start a new center, that our doctor cost goes significantly higher. So therefore, uh, the doctor cost goes up. What we always see is that doctor cost goes between uh, 22 to 24 percent. Uh, really, it goes up to 25 percent also. Understand. So 25 percent is perhaps the benchmark that you aspire to to maintain, even as you. Uh, I would get worried if it is beyond that. <laughs> <laughs> Understood. 
Understood. And uh, no, I think that's all I had. Again, congratulations on the results for clinical and and thank, 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 thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Yogesh Tiwari from Marihan Capital. Please go ahead. Thank you, sir, for taking my question. Uh, I had certain questions on the balance sheet. So last year we had this uh, goodwill of about 30 million, uh, which uh, we do not have now. So if you can uh, share some details on the theme. Right, sir. Uh, no, uh, it's a con it's a con on the control. The goodwill was you know uh, uh, created long back when we uh, merged to one of our subsidiaries in way back in 2000. 14, 15. So that you know, as a prudence, you know, call for the writing of a goodwill. So we have taken it and uh, it now it's not very material amount. About, uh, no, uh, two, two crores, actually, so. so, sir, going forward, there will not be. Uh, we can assume there will be no uh, nothing in terms of goodwill going forward. No, no, there is nothing. No, no, no intangible like goodwill in the books. No. Sure, sir. And sir, other thing on the intangible. So we have some intangible assets uh, jump from uh, like one crore to four crore, and there are some under development from one crore to two crore. So how do we look at this? Uh, like what would be under development and other intangible assets, and the jump in the theme? It's an I. It's all. See, we are implementing new HIS actually. So it's all life is related. Now some of the softwares, you know, what we are implementing, and those are all. You know, we have. Uh, we are kind of upgrading our HIS after seven years, you know. So that, that related to that, we bought uh, not some of the assets actually. Sure, sir. So just for modeling purpose, uh, would it be remain in the same range for FI24? Uh, so in FI24, we may incur another about you know, uh, two three crores uh, towards this actually to complete that entire implementation and uh, you know the, the new software, whatever we. The PA tool, all those things. Another two to three crores we'll spend on this. So, like two to two three crores uh, more under asset uh, intangible asset under development. It might increase. Right? Yeah. Yes. Current uh, no, current FI, you will see the addition of uh, two to three crores. Okay, okay. Thank you very much. Uh, sir, just last one question. On the other financial assets, uh, it has increased by about 55 crores to 234 crores. So if you can share uh, the spike in the other financial asset. It's actually the uh, fixed deposits what we have. So no, it, it's based on the reclassification we have done. So as per that, you know, any, any deposit which is having a maturity of more than 12 months has to go to the other financial asset that is gone actually. Okay, okay, okay. Got it, yes. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. As there are no further questions, I would now like to hand the conference over to management for closing comments. So, thank you very much for uh, uh, all the uh, analysts in this community for patiently listening, and uh, we continue to engage. Of course, uh, if there are any questions, we, they, we, we may reach out to the, our investor relations team. Um, so thank you very much, uh, CDR and uh, all the uh, analysts and investors. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines.